Hi, I'm Dr. Selby. I'm a intern here at Dove Lewis and uh, today I'm going to show you how to place an intraosseous catheter and where to place one and how to do it and when it's indicated and when it's not indicated. Um, so first we're going to talk a little bit about when these are when the ideal time to place an intraosseous catheter is. Um, and in an emergency situation is usually when we're considering these, when we're unable to obtain vascular access, either because the patient's too small, such as in an exotic animal or neonate, where we're unable to hit a vein, or they're in just a de decompensated state of shock um, to the point their veins have collapsed, so we cannot get into a vein, or it is taken too long. Um, sometimes you can place a central line, um, other times it's easier to just go straight to the bone marrow um, and place an IO catheter so that you can get your emergency drugs in and whatever else you need rather than waste try time trying to prep and uh, place a central line. So that's when we want to place an IO catheter. Um, the Where we want to place them, there's a few different sites and it kind of depends on the species that you're working with. Uh, the main one to remember is that if this is for a bird, they have pneumatic bones. So you actually don't want to place it in any of their pneumatic bones. So don't place it in their femur or their humerus, which is an ideal place for most other species, but not in avians. Um, but in your dogs, cats, reptiles, rodents kind of thing, um, other exotic species, we're mainly looking at the femur or the humerus are kind of the go-to spots. You can also place one in the wing of the ilium. So just to kind of mark a few of these places here, uh, head of the femur is kind of the ideal place. And so you want to go right here in kind of the um, fossa in between the, uh, the, the trochlea fossa. So right where the head of the femur is and then just straight down into the bone. The main thing to keep in mind with this is if you go and slip off with your needle and go caudally, that's right where the sciatic nerve is. So you want to be very cognizant of that and kind of go more medially and straight down into the fossa. Make sure your needle doesn't slip because you could actually damage the sciatic. Um, with the other areas, we can do the wing of the ilium and the dog. So you just find kind of the point of the wing of the ilium and then you go kind of directly down and into it. This one I find is a little bit harder, but it can be a little bit nicer for the patient for their mobility. It's often uh, also sticks straight up here, so ease of access. Um, the other place that we can place one is the uh, the, the tibia and often this is a consideration when either they're an avian species so you can't place it in the femur or the humerus um, so you take you kind of go in the proximal tibia so you would flex the stifle and then you want to get straight down into it so you kind of find your landmarks get each opposite side of the condyle you feel the little divot right where the stifle is and you go straight down there. In a adult dog, once the bones have already ossified, it's much more difficult to place these by hand. Uh, ideally, you have an automated device such as a easy IO catheter or a similar comparable device and that allows you to place it in any animal. Um, uh, whether they're an, an adult large dog or neonate, you can use that device. Uh, but if you don't have that device, which we don't, you can use hypodermic needles um, or if you're in a pinch, um, jam sheety kind of uh, bone marrow biopsy type needles because they are designed to go into the bone marrow. So you can use this if you're in a pinch and don't have access to an uh, IO automated device. So with that in mind, uh, one of the contraindications to placing an IO catheter is if you have any trauma to that leg. Uh, one of the risks is that you can actually break the leg. So that's a low risk complication, but it is present. Um, so you do need to inform the owner if you're in that type of situation where you're talking with them first about placement or just to keep in mind for your thoughts um, that if this goes wrong, you have potential to break the bone, especially if there's some sort of path pathologic condition, osteoporosis or something that increases that risk. Um, so the other contraindication uh, that you worry about is if there's any sort of infection or wounds over the site of insertion um, or if there's 
swell in to the point where you can't see your landmarks, you don't know where you're directing your needle. Uh, and lastly, if somebody has already tried an IO catheter in the last 48 hours or so, um, basically if you place one in there uh, and the bone has already kind of been um, cored out, uh, you will have leakage and extra extravasation of those fluids or whatever else you're putting in there. So those are your contraindications. Um, so now uh, let's give it a try and we'll walk through kind of the procedure here and see how it goes. So this is done with either the animal under light sedative or anesthesia or in, you're in an emergency situation, you can have it done uh, with an awake patient. Especially if they are an awake patient, you're going to want to use some lidocaine um, or somewhere local block to help with any pain from this procedure. Uh, despite the kind of amount of force you need to use with the procedure uh, is not thought to be any more painful than an IV catheter placement in a human at least. Um, so keep that in mind that you can still proceed with this even if you don't have um, pain meds on board. So you find your insertion site. In this case, we're gonna go for our femur. And so we're gonna block down to the scrub first, but we're gonna kind of block down to the periosteum and you feel your needle hit the bone. So you want to block the periosteum and up. One thing to keep in mind is your needle selection. Um, so um, similar to most emergency situations, the, uh, the bigger bore is better and that's also going to be easier to get into the marrow. Um, so uh, you may reach for a 16 gauge, but if you're in like a neonate, um, you're really looking at 20 gauge. In exotic species, you may even do like a 22 gauge. So it's all very specific to the, to the patient. Uh, in terms of length, you know, you can use longer needles. The main thing is you just need to be in the medullary cavity. So you don't need to be all the way down through it. Um, you really just need to be long enough to take this needle and get from kind of the, the cortex down into the medullary cavity. So as long as you can pierce down into there, you're good. But you may need a longer needle. If you have a bigger dog, this is not gonna be long enough. If I have a large dog, I may need something like the spinal needle that's gonna be able to get all the way down through the, um, into the diaphysis of the bone. When you're placing your needle, your first encounter resistance at the level of the bone, you start to twist. And the main thing that you're looking for is resistance is gonna, all of a sudden you're gonna pop through, and resistance is just gonna stop. And you just feel the needle just slide right through. And that means that you've passed through the cortex and then now you're in the medullary cavity of the, of the bone, which you want to be in. So you're actually be able to feel it when you're in and then make sure that you're seated. The one thing you want to be careful of is you never want to go through and through. So if you get through, you pop through, and then you're all of a sudden encountering more resistance, you may be at the other end of the cortices. So your angle may be slightly off. You may need to uh, kind of adjust that. Okay, now that the needle is in, one of the things you wanna to check to make sure it's in is can you move, if you move the needle, does it move the leg? In this case, it does. If your needle is situated outside in the subcutis, such as if we took, just to show you, if we were down here, I'm not gonna move the leg with this needle. It's just gonna be free move in. Whereas this one, you can see the leg actually pops up. So I can be pretty confident that I'm seated in that bone marrow. Now, once you're in, you can start to flush and administer any sort of fluids. Um, but this is actually one of the more painful things about this procedure is not the placement of it, but the fluid administration is what people say hurts the most. So I actually like to infuse some more lidocaine into this before we start our process of bolus and fluids. Again, especially in an awake patient. So um, another thing you can do is if you need to get blood, you can actually aspirate bone marrow and run your CBC chemistry, um, whatever values you'd like to get in that immediate time frame, and actually get your sample that way. Now that you have your catheter in, you've checked that the leg indeed moves with the catheter. You can also take an x-ray to um, ensure that you are correctly seated in the marrow. So now you want to go ahead and infuse some lidocaine to help with uh, any pain with the 
fluids um, or your, your medication that you're actually putting in there, that seems to be the most painful part is not actually the placement, but the um, infusion of fluids, uh, especially at rapid rates as we would in a state of shock. So you can go ahead and infuse some lidocaine into there. And if it infuses down, great, um, but if it actually stuck and you're trying to infuse and nothing's going, that's a common problem if you use a hypodermic needle. Basically, your needle has been clogged with pieces of, uh, of, the, of the bone marrow. And uh, the way to fix that is simply to replace your needle. So you're just go through the same hole that you've already made, basically back out your IO catheter, and again, do this in, with aseptic, aseptic technique. And then you just reseat the new one and you check it, make sure it's still in there, and then you can go ahead and infuse whatever fluids you need. And this can be, you can put essentially anything that you would put in an IV, can go IO. Uh, not everything has been checked, but any fluids, emergency drugs, um, pain medication, all of that can go directly IO. Um, the plan is to keep this in long enough so that you can stabilize your patient and then you can place a more long-term catheter. But you can keep these in for upwards of 24 hours if you need to. However, ideally, as soon as you have finished its use and you have uh, secured vascular access, you should remove this because there is risk of osteomyelitis, no matter how small. Uh, however, the less time you have this catheter in for it, the, the better. Um, for removal, you can just do a kind of um, little band-aid or uh, if you did do a cut down or something to facilitate the placement uh, just pop one or two sutures in there and uh, and close it up um, now if you did want to do the tibia um, either in the case of a um, exotic patient or for their mobility or something you uh, the femur or the humerus was not a option uh, you can do the tibia so we're going to see if we can make that work again similar kind of thing here where you will place kind of grab a hold get your landmarks in you want to go right in the divot here and we're just gonna turn as we go let the needle do most of the work and get into that bone. Here you don't have to worry about the sciatic nerve, so that may be one reason that you would reach for this first. Okay. So that seems to be fairly well seated. So again, you can check. I can move this whole leg just by moving the needle. So I can feel pretty confident confident about being in there. So again, I will infuse if it's lidocaine, ideally, and it goes, and right now it's sticking. You can see it doesn't wanna go. So I would go ahead and replace my needle with a different one. You just back it out the same way you came, kinda of turn in as you go. So now we're just gonna replace, going through that same hole that we had before. So same kind of way you did it before, same skin incision, and then see how that slid just right in there? And again, it moves with the leg. So that's how I know I found my same site. And now, before that needle was clogged, now it's gonna infuse so if you run into that, and it happens almost every time after you place an IO catheter with a hypodermic needle, just switch the needle, same hole, then you should be able to flush and keep that patent. Catheter care for this, the same as any other catheter, uh, except I would use heparinized saline just to be on the safe side. Um, flush it every four hours as you would any other catheter when it's not in use. So that is how you place an IO catheter. Again, these are most indicated for neonates and exotics are the times that you're reaching for these first. Um, but you can use these even in an adult patient, again, especially if you have one of those automated devices, although not completely necessary, although it is harder. Um, when you are placing these, keep in mind, 
remove them as soon as they're no longer needed. As soon as you have vascular access, uh, you do want to remove these, um, reduce the risk of infection as much as possible. Uh, do not place them in a site that's traumatized or has signs of infection. Um, and do not place one if somebody has already tried to place one within the last 48 hours because uh, you are one will have the fluids uh, leak out and two you're at an increased risk of fracture um, when you do place these it is very common when using just a hypodermic needle that you will get the uh, catheter to become clogged immediately after placing if that does occur just replace the needle through the same exact hole that you went in, and then it should flush as normally. Um, do infuse lidocaine, um, either both as a local, when it be right before you're placing these, and also after you infuse them. Typically, you're reaching for about a half to one mg per keg of lidocaine in, in a canine patient at least. If you're in a feline patient, I would be um, more, more conservative and do like 0.2 mg per keg, if anything at all, uh, just because cats are so sensitive to lidocaine. Um, basically, keep in mind, anything you were given IO is the same as giving it IV. Um, so they still have that lidocaine sensitivity.